Hi, I'm Jeff Cogswell. Today here at Go Parallel, let's take a look at how to do some timing in OpenMP. Now, in a previous video, I did some timing with threading building blocks, and I used some functions that are built into threading building blocks. Well, today we'll look at some functions that are built into OpenMP. Now, remember, when you do timing with parallel programming, you usually want to do what's called wall timing, uh, where, where you check the total time that has passed as opposed to the CPU time. Now, the CPU time, if you run, if you have, say, uh, one, one function that you're going to spawn off into eight separate threads on eight separate cores, and the total thing runs for one second, uh, the CPU time is actually going to be eight seconds because it's going to take the total of all, all eight cores and add them up. Uh, sometimes that might be what you want, but usually if you want to find out how fast the process actually ran, in that case, you just want the one second, which is the wall time. So that's what we're going to look at with uh, OpenMP here. Uh, so let's go ahead and put in some OpenMP code here. I'm going to go ahead and make some really big uh, uh, float arrays. So let's make a couple of really... Let's make... Uh, I've got a big number here, which is going to be actually 16 gigabytes of, of floats. I'm going to float star a equal. Now, I tried to do this earlier with just doing new float uh, size. And if we run that, we're going to get into a compiler problem here. Uh, array is too large, but that's actually not the case. Uh, we we do have 64-bit compiling going on here. Uh, this is just a, an issue with the compiler in the C++ language. I can explore this later uh, to figure out exactly why that's happening, if there's interest. But what, one way around that is to just do a malloc and cast it to a float. But now remember, with malloc, it's the actual number of bytes. So we've got to take our size and multiply it by size of float, which is 4. And this way, when we multiply that by 4, that big number by 4, we end up with 16, which is 16 gigabytes. And let's make four of these, or three of these, rather. And one more, and I'll just copy it. And now we've got our memory allocated. I'm on a massive processor and computer here where I've got uh, 64 gigabytes available to me. So I've got three of these 16 gigabytes of uh, arrays, float arrays. And so they will fit in memory. And then let's go ahead and create two doubles, start time and end time. I'm going to set my C out precision to 8 for my doubles. And then I'm going to go ahead and do some parallel coding here. Now, for OpenMP, to do a parallel 4, we do pragma OMP parallel 4. And then we go ahead and do our, our loop. Uh, for this first loop, I'm just going to go ahead and fill this, these, each of these arrays. Oops, I got pregnant on here. And I'm going to do AI, and I'm just going to do some random calculations. We'll do AI uh, equal I percent uh, 25, A or BI equal I percent 30. That's the modulus. And then CI will just initialize to zero because we're going to fill that up. It doesn't really matter. We don't need to initialize it, but we'll go and do that anyway. And then down here, I'm going to do another loop. And then I'm just going to do again a uh, random calculation here. I'm going to make this a little smaller so we have more room to work. Uh, let's just do uh, 2 times AI times BI plus, say, 5 times BI. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's, uh, do some timing here. We can run this, but we'll put the timing in right now before we get started. We call OMP get W time. Now, we can only use this if we've got 
this header file, which I edited before I started the video, uh, omp.h, and Visual Studio finds it for you pretty easily. Uh, make sure that you turned on, get into your properties up here, that you turned on your, uh, down here in the Intel, OpenMP support generate parallel code. And the the additions, the extensions for Visual Studio will find it for you. P dot H. Okay. And now we're gonna do an end time here and do the same thing again. OMP get W time. And W time will give you the the time in seconds uh, with very high precision. There, I'll show you in a minute. There's a way. Well, j just call OMP get W tick if you want to see the precision. And then we will print out what we've got here. Time to fill. Now it's going to be interesting when we run this because the you'll see the way it allocates the memory here doesn't happen initially when we cre actually create the flow, the, f the arrays. It gets interesting. You'll see how that works. And then we do start time or end time on start time. And then let's do it again. We'll just copy this up here. And time to calculate. Now, if I got all that right, Compile it, and let's go ahead and run this. Now remember again, this is a really powerful machine I've got here. Let's look at this here, Windows Task Manager. You can see all those cores and the amount of physical RAM. And so let's go ahead and run this. Now you can see that the memory is going up. This is actually happening as we do uh, the initialization, uh, that first loop. And so it's it's doing allocation as we're filling the loop, which is kind of interesting. And that's actually happening on the operating system. And it's good to go ahead and run through the loops like this for performance, uh, because that way uh, you'll, you'll get all your memory allocated and it won't impact the when it's time to do the actual calculations, because you can see the the fill time took 33.015366 seconds, and the calculation time took only 1.5222 or 1.5227 uh, seconds, and that's it. The we have we called get w time before and after each loop, and we did the difference, and it gave us the amount of time that passed. Now you can see here we did uh, four billion uh, calculations of this calculation right here in 1.5 seconds. And thanks to OpenMP, it was able to spread it out across all these cores here and run it much faster than it otherwise would have. And so now we, if we wanted to, we could run the same program on a smaller machine and get a pretty accurate comparison since this is a, a very precise uh, timer for us. So that's how you use the timer in OpenMP.